What's up everyone, it's Dakota and welcome back to another modern video and today we're going to be taking a look at the deck that you either absolutely love or completely despise in the mono green Tron deck. It's a deck that really from that like mid 2010s era of modern has seemed to just kind of find a way to continue to be relevant in the format and you know posture in position to be you know one of like the top like five or ten decks in the format which in a wide open format like modern being in like the top five or even the top ten is honestly an accomplishment in itself especially as an archetype as straightforward as a mono green tron but of course before we get too deep into the deck and we kind of go through the ins and outs of course if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you want to see more content from me where i go over the modern and pioneer formats as well as doing some other longer form videos please consider subscribing to the channel and ring the notification bell so you know when those videos get posted if you go down into the description of this video you will find a link to this deck list for mono green tron as well as my discord server so if you're interested in joining over there as well please consider joining so mono green tron is based on the three urza lands from antiquities so uh we have urza's tower power plant and mine and so the each individually or with any combination of the two on the battlefield tap for one colorless mana but if you have mine tower and power plant on the battlefield urza's mine and urza's power plant will tap for two colorless mana while urza's tower will tap for three colorless mana so in total you can produce seven colorless mana with these three lands in play on turn three now the idea like back in the day you get karn liberated on turn three and you would start blowing up your opponent's lands and then you just blow up another land and then you know you play another karn and then they were just basically like they were off of it. like the game was over uh in these later versions of tron it's less about getting karn liberated and more about just kind of like the, the value and everything you know we've shifted from one pantsless karn to another pantsless karn and karn the great creator this is a card that has been talked about to ad nauseum for you know the pioneer format for the modern format and it's probably one of the contextually speaking uh a, a really really good planeswalker probably top five of all time based on like what format you're talking about so karn the great creator for a colorless mana activated abilities of artifacts your opponent's control cannot be activated a plus one that turns a non-creature artifact into an artifact creature with power toughness equal to its converted mana cost and then a minus two that you can choose an artifact card you own from outside the game or in exile which is relevant from time to time maybe not necessarily here but you know in other formats that has been relevant uh you reveal that card and you put it into your hand so uh these tron decks instead of playing like a traditional sideboard plan like most decks do in the modern format it has what we call a Karn board, wish board, however you want to call it. And you're playing some one-ofs of cards that, you know, are very powerful that you would want in, you know, game one settings where your opponent's not really trying to hate you out necessarily, but you're then able to kind of like attack them in that way. So the Karn board that we're kind of looking at, we have a Chalice of the Void, which of course is like the Cascade decks. And normally you can play this against like Murtide and things like that, put it on one and you can lock them out of a, a good amount of things in the matchup. Um, obviously you're also going to counter like your Relics, Expedition maps, so on. But if you have Tron, like it really doesn't matter because you're just looking to cast like all of these big threats, which we'll get to here in a minute. Tormod's Crypt for the Graveyard decks. You have a Walking Ballista, which is actually this cool Assault Tron art from the uh, Fallout set. Pretty neat. But, you know, this could uh, tackle some smaller creatures. Of course, just being a win condition because you just get a ton of mana. Make it into, you know, have like 10 mana. It's a 5-5, five, five, you, know, you know, on turn whatever. You know, really as early as turn 4. And then from there, you're able to put additional mana into it make it huge and just attack and kill your opponent or just uh, stack up enough counters on it to where you can just kill them with the walking ballista removing counters. Uh, you have Pithing Needle to name any annoying non-land permanents or really even land permanents that uh, your opponent could be playing. Uh, Curse Totem for like the Yawgmoth decks. You have Liquid Metal Coating, which pairs very well with Karn because at a certain point you can just play Liquid Metal Coating. You can target one of their lands and then you can plus Karn on that land. And since it is a non-creature artifact, uh, it'll get uh, its power and toughness will be equal to its converted mana cost. Lands, notably, don't know if you've heard, have zero converted mana cost. So you'll just essentially have like a stone rain. Like you'll be able to stone rain your opponent every turn. But you don't want to get a card with Karn the Great Creator. 
the stone brain is like a way that you can kind of hose some of these other like combo-y decks and things like that uh this in a way can be sort of kind of a win condition like you could just uh, end up like decking your opponent out by taking enough cards out of their library uh traditionally more in the you know the previous like pioneer builds before Karn the great creator got banned but you know just a card that you know if, if there's something that you can't deal with or you know you have the mana left over you can go get stone brain and then exile it and even though it exiles itself you can still get it back with karn pretty neat honestly uh and steering bridge for the other aggro decks you have cityscape leveler and sundering titan is like kind of your big beefy boys in the sideboard to end up kind of like messing with your opponent sundering titan is going to blow up a ton of lands and especially in a format where we have a ley line of the guild pack uh you're gonna be able to hit five lands with this um pretty consistently or really all of your opponent's lands you know, as long as, you know, you choose the, the correct types and everything like that. Um, you can end up blowing up one of your own lands. So really, if your opponent has four lands in play and you have a one of your forests in play, uh, you can blow up your own Sundering Titan. That is a possibility. But aside from that, you know, you're going to end up like stone raining your opponent for the most part completely out of the game. And then when it leaves, it gets to do the same thing. Cityscape Leveler is going to get to destroy non-land permanents and then your opponents create uh, Power Stone tokens. But of course, in conjunction... With something like Karn the Great Creator, they're not going to be able to activate those Power Stones, even if they are able to, like, tap them for mana and, you know, place me any meaningful spells. And then uh, Cityscape Lover also gets to do this when it attacks. It's, you know, an 80, I believe. And it gets to unearth for 8. You know, it's just a big threat. Tramples, your opponent's not really going to be able to block it. It's going to be able to kind of take on, you know, the, the Kavus and things like that of, you know, the format. So... Really, Cityscape Leveler may not be the end-all, be-all, but, you know, it does blow up the, uh, blows up the ley line of the guild pack when you cast it and then from there like it's gonna be able to attack and take out like scions and things like that so really neat card package uh i guess continuing the sideboard you have like four cards that you really don't care about well that you care about but that you can't get with karn and one force of vigor and then three pick your poison which have kind of been the cards of choice really for the format since we've had like the scion plus guild pack combo uh, going even further, you know, Ugin the Spirit Dragon as like a one of is actually pretty neat because uh, since Leyland the Guild Pack is going to have everything all colors, you can minus X and you're going to be able to exile uh, each permanent with converted mana cost X or less that is one or more colors. So you're going to be able to like minus and get rid of everything really except for a, uh, a Scion because Scion is still going to be like 12 mana when it's in play but you're going to be able to get rid of everything else and just leave them with a 4-4 which is totally fine in all in all honesty because then they're going to get rid of your ugin or they're going to have to respect the ugin a little bit and then you're able to like uh say escape level or ulamog so on so uh we've gone over you know like the main the main thing that you're getting when you have tron like the the thing that you want to be playing you know glancing over some of these things i mean like worm coil engine six mana six six you know that's going to make two three three bodies when it dies uh you have ulamog the ceaseless hunger which is just going to exile two of your opponent's best permanents most of the time and then it's just an indestructible 10 10 that is then going to mill your opponent out if, even if they're able to chump block it forever uh you have uh ugin the spirit dragon that we just went over another city scape leveler things like that but obviously you're not going to have tron in your opening hand every single game so you have to find a way to assemble tron and this deck list in particular different from other ones you'll see like one or two urza sagas so you can get some of these like one mana uh artifacts out of your deck but uh this one opting to be a little bit leaner on lands playing beside you so uh, it's a little bit more important that you have like other ways to kind of find these things so uh the big one like sylvan scrying super simple two mana search your library for a land card reveal it put it to your hand uh, you have uh, ancient stirrings which is going to look at the top five cards reveal a colorless card from among them put it into your hand so not only can this find lands but it can find your card the great creator log so on any of these things and uh any of your other artifacts are down here in chromatic sphere and chromatic star that are essentially going to let you uh put one mana into it tap sacrifice it and then draw a card for it and then you're going to get a mana of any color out of it so you're essentially just like filtering mana through while also just getting to draw cards you have uh, expedition map which does its best impression of a sylvan scrying which is going to allow you to search a library for a land card put your hand and shuffle your library so the name of the game is definitely finding you know your maps your scryings your stirrings and even like cycling these stars and spheres to eventually find mine 
and power plant tower, get them into play, cash your big things. You know, it's kind of like an A, B, C kind of step. Uh, going even further, you have like Relic Progenitus that you can uh, mess with the graveyard and also does get to draw a card. For Oblivion Stone, for the One Ring. Now, we know the One Ring is, you know, super powerful. It's probably one of the best cards to play in modern right now you know four mana indestructible if it when it enters the battlefield if you cast it you gain protection from everything until your next turn being your upkeep you lose a life for each burden counter on it you tap put a burden counter on it and then draw that many cards a lot of tron's problems pre lord of the rings was the fact that you know you you were essentially made up of deck that had like haymakers and then you had you know uh like cyclers and things like that like you you know you weren't necessarily excited to see like sylvan scryings or expedition maps because like yeah you could get more mana and sure they might have played like a few more utility lands in the sideboard but realistically speaking you know you were just kind of hoping to draw like a payoff and everything like that now with the one ring being able to see so many extra cards especially your opponent's not adequately putting pressure on you the one ring can draw you know six you know six ten cards and then you you're going to end up finding another ring and then you're going to end up being able to legend rule that ring re-establish protection and of course draw you know incrementally more cards without taking as much damage as you know you typically would with cards that will cause you to lose life when drawing cards this is easily one of the best cards in the format uh there used to be ways where you could you know when you played like the haywire might that you could exile your ring with it gain some life obviously reset the ring and then use karn to go grab the ring from exile uh none of the shenanigans is really happening here but it could happen if your opponent is like playing something like yawgmoth where they can get rid of the one ring that way um, and yeah, that is the mono green Tron deck for modern, very straightforward. It's a very ABC deck. Your hands generally, a lot of the time you're looking for, you know, if you're able to assemble Tron and then, you know, if you're not, you're like mulliganing essentially any seven that doesn't have like Tron in it, you know, uh, with all the cyclers, with all the different things that you can use to kind of draw cards and, you know, look at, you know, so many cards, uh, having a threat along with tron really isn't that important the main thing is just being able to assemble mine power uh mine power plant and tower as soon as possible and then hopefully slamming karn the great creator finding a lock piece that's going to stop your opponent from pressuring you and then finding something like the one ring or using karn to go and get like cityscape level or sundering titan especially sundering titan being very very good in this format currently with all the leyline of the guild pack running around and literally every deck playing leyline plus scion so you know, really neat, really cool. Uh, Mono Green Tron, you know, again, I said in the beginning of the video, it's kind of like everyone loves it or they hate it. And, you know, it's from the sheer consistency of the deck. You know, the, game, the number of games where you can go to four or five cards and start the game and you literally have, like, Nat Tron on, like, turn three and then you slam, like, a card the Great Creator and then you go into, like, Ulamog or even, like, Seascape Leveler or an Ugin and, you know, your opponent is just, like, essentially drowning in the fact that, like, you know, you have the choice between, you know, getting a Seascape level or Sundering Titan, getting another lock piece, you know, coding to kind of like shut off like their best thing. Uh, notably, this could shut off Planeswalkers too in conjunction with Karn the Great Creator since their loyalty abilities are activated abilities. So you can just stop on their upkeep. Liquid Mellow coding their Planeswalker. Can't activate it, anything like that. So uh, really neat, really cool. The deck does have a lot of cool interactions. It, it, it kind of, for the most part, is is what it is style of deck you know uh while there is some cool like tricks and stuff that you can do you know it's it's very straight up you know you're you're like mike tyson you're trying to like end the game early you're trying to knock your opponent out in the first or second round and, like that's just how it is so you know mono green tron very powerful i definitely like i said probably in like the top 10 modern decks which in a format that is as wide open as modern uh, is you know very good and it's a deck that is relatively consistent in what it does you just kind of have to you know at times find like the right string of matchups and everything like that to you know have some success and uh this player here Jumba, had some pretty good success in the modern challenge so anyway that's gonna do it for me in this video hope you all enjoyed if you did please leave a like on the video comment down below if there's another modern deck that you would like to see here of course, uh, subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell, so you know when future videos get posted. Check out the Discord server. Check out the deck list if you want to go and play the deck for yourself. And then that's going to do it for me. Hope you all enjoyed, and I hope to see you all in the next video.